Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about controller settings and binds in Rocket League. Now, if you've played Rocket League for any amount of time at all, you should have realized that the default settings just don't allow you to play at your best. No matter how good you are, if you stick to the default settings, you're always going to be at a disadvantage. I mean, it's no coincidence that almost every pro-level Rocket League player is using custom controls rather than the default. But before I get into this video, one last thing I want to mention is that if you're part of the 98% of people currently watching that are not subscribed to the channel, then please consider subscribing if you like this video. It's completely free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about how to improve your controller settings in Rocket League. All right, first things first guys, before we even get into your key binds, I wanna quickly go through what are in my opinion, the most underrated and overlooked settings in all of Rocket League. In fact, I didn't even think to change my steering sensitivity or aerial sensitivity off the default for the first thousand hours I played Rocket League. But immediately after I changed these settings, I noticed an instant improvement in my car control and speed in game. Okay, so starting from the top, the first setting I want to talk about is steering sensitivity. This setting controls how sensitive your joystick is when steering your car. So a higher sensitivity means your steering will be faster and more sensitive to your joystick movement, whereas a low sensitivity means your car will turn slower and more controlled. Now with this setting, I highly, highly recommend you increase it above the default 1.0 because a higher sensitivity is going to allow you to make quicker adjustments with your car. Now that being said, you don't want to increase the setting so high that you completely lose control. So in my opinion, the sweet spot for the setting that most pros use is anywhere from 1.3 to 2.0. Like I said before, if you can go higher with this setting, do it but at the end of the day, stick to what feels most comfortable. The next setting I wanna talk about is aerial sensitivity. What this setting does is just like steering sensitivity, except it works while in the air. Wow. For the sake of consistency, I recommend using the same aerial sensitivity as you did steering sensitivity, just so your car control is the same, whether you're grounded or in the air. The last two settings I wanna briefly mention are your controller dead zone settings. Since a lot of people are confused about what these settings actually do, I'm going to try to explain them as simply as I can. What the first controller dead zone setting does is it controls how far you need to move your joystick for the game to register a movement. For example, if you set the setting at 1.0, you'd need to be holding your joystick as far as it could go for the game to register any movement. Whereas if you set it at zero, the slightest movement in your joystick will be picked up by the game. So with this setting, most pros agree that you want to be somewhere between 0.05 and 0.10. The reason you want to have the setting low is because you want your joystick to be as responsive and as quick with your movements as possible. But at the same time, you don't want to be accidentally steering your car. So it's nice to go as close as you can to zero, but not all the way there. On to the final setting, and that is Dodge Dead Zone. Now, even though Dodge Dead Zone works just like Controller Dead Zone, I recommend using a setting much higher, somewhere between 0.60 and 0.80. The reason most pros use a higher Dodge Dead Zone is because being able to double jump and tilt your car back quickly while flying in the air is super important at the high levels. So when you're doing these quick aerials, you don't wanna be accidentally flipping one way or another, and a high dodge dead zone protects you from those accidental flips. Okay, now that we're done with settings, let's talk about controller binds. Now let me just start this out by saying that binds are something that can definitely vary from player to player. However, no matter what your binds are, they need to enable you to pull off high level mechanics in game. And this applies even if you're newer to the game and aren't necessarily at a super high level yet. 
because when you do get to that point where you're trying to learn more advanced mechanics, you're definitely not going to want to have to completely relearn your controls while you learn those mechanics at the same time. Oh, and this goes without saying, but these guidelines will apply to people using a standard controller grip. If you're playing something like Claw, you probably already know more than me and don't need this guide in the first place. Anyways, the two main things your binds need to enable you to do is jump, boost, and air roll, as well as jump, boost, and power slide all simultaneously. This is because when you start doing quick aerials, special types of flicks, and other high level mechanics, you're going to need to be able to press these buttons all at once. So I recommend, if you can, moving your boost to a bumper button so you can really easily hold it down while you play. For me personally, I really like having my boost button on left trigger, but this is because I use a special set of controls that only one other pro player named Rizzo uses where my accelerate and brake buttons are actually just my left joystick pointing up or down. Now if you can do this, I highly highly recommend it, especially if you're a new player, because doing this frees up so many buttons now that you don't have to bind accelerate or brake. Either way though, definitely try putting boost on the back of your controller if you already have jump on the front. Another bind players often don't think about enough is power slide. You might think when you start that power slide doesn't matter much, but as you get better and better at the game, you'll realize how often you actually need to use it. So just like with boost, I recommend putting this button on the back of your controller just so you can easily press it alongside the rest of your buttons. The last bind I want to mention is your air roll button. I currently have my air roll bound to the front of my controller, but it sits right next to my jump button, which means I can hit both at the same time with my thumb. Whatever you decide on, just make sure you follow those initial guidelines so that you can jump boost air roll or jump boost power slide all at the same time. An extra tip I'll add is that if you're having trouble finding a button you like on your controller for power slide, you can actually free up space by binding power slide to the same button you did air roll, because you can only power slide on the ground and air roll in the air. Like I said though guys, there's no problem if your controls don't look exactly like mine or exactly like the pros. What matters most is that they fit these general guidelines and then you can customize them however you want from there. For example, for the longest time I actually never used directional aerial. But when I wanted to learn how to tornado spin a few days ago, having my control set up like this gave me enough flexibility to have an extra button open to bind to directional air roll. So like I said, try to follow these guidelines, but at the end of the day, do what works best for you. One last thing I want to stress guys is the importance of consistency. You could have followed every tip in this video perfectly, but if each time you loaded up Rocket League, you ended up changing your steering sensitivity or even switching your keybinds, you're never going to be able to play at your best. So do your best to pick a set of controls and stick to them, even if it's tough at first. I promise, even if it's hard right now, you'll be better in the long run. Anyways though guys, that's about all for this video. But before the video ends, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random commenter on my videos to be coached to GC by me. What this means is that if your comment gets picked, I'll coach you until you hit Grand Champion rank in Rocket League. So if you want to enter for a chance to win at that, all you have to do is leave a comment below with your rank in Rocket League. If you did find this video interesting, all I ask is that you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. These videos take me so many hours to make, so if you could do those two things, I'd really appreciate it. That's all I've got though, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.